All right, how many of you have been to Hawker's Asia Street Fair? Ooh. Awesome, thanks guys. Uh, <laughs> I was hoping it wouldn't be like none, that would be, that would be a little discouraging. So Hawker's, um, I'll give you a quick background on who I am and then kind of work into this whole platform. Um, my name is Caleb Harrell. I'm one of four founders of Hawker's. Uh, the other three guys are Asian, so since it's Asia Street Fair, that helps. Um, so everybody always has to taste a laugh, and I was like, ooh, am I allowed to laugh? He said, no, they're our partners, it's cool. Uh, so I started, um, I'm a serial entrepreneur. That's uh, S-C-R-I-A-L, not C-E-R-E-A-L. Um, I have a, a vested interest in a men's retail brand right now. I own a company called Soapbox, which is a brand development firm. And now I am um, co-founder of Hopper's Industry Fair the Restaurant. Um, most, of this, most of this entrepreneurship stems from and kind of in some ways connected to Soapbox. Soapbox is a company that we started uh, six years ago or so. Um, the business premises were a brand development firm. So we go into businesses that are startups, um, maybe want to refresh their brand, brand from scratch and help them uh, completely overhaul everything. And, and our, our vision is that a brand is not just you know, look and feel, it's not just a logo. It's not just your color palette. A brand is your perception to your customers, to your clients. So it's got to be, you mentioned the word transparent a minute ago, Joel. It's got to be very transparent from the inside out of your business. It's how your employees treat your customers. It's how your management treats your employees, um, all the way down to uh, what color shoes you're wearing and all that stuff. So for, it's, it has to be the whole package. And that's what we try to provide to clients through Soapbox. I only tell you that to give you context. It has nothing to do with uh, what I'm talking about today, but I want you to know where I'm coming from because I feel like uh, it's important to know uh, where a person's, a, a, a certain person's perspective is important for you to know when uh, hearing what they have to say so that you can uh, accurately gauge whether or not I'm being honest. <laughs> so, um, Hawkers, we started this uh, two and a half years ago. Uh, one of the partners came to myself and Wayne, who is my partner at Soapbox, and said, hey, do you want to start a restaurant? And we were like, hell no, that sounds terrible. <laughs> and he came back and said, well, you're going to be doing all the branding work for free anyway, so you might as well uh, invest. And we got suckered into this more. And so we came on board. We had about 50% uh, of the menu, uh, which comes from the, the other three partners' families. It's actually a lot, about half of our menu is actually served on the streets of Asia with the same recipes. Um, they were kind enough to, to give us those recipes and let us find a way to duplicate them in a restaurant setting in America. Um, so the next thing, I, you know, I, I got on board and I said, okay, well, let's figure out how we can package this thing. And that was where my expertise came in. So we packaged it as Asian Street Fair. And as you know, Street Fair is a very popular, it's very trendy right now. Um, but also Southeast Asian cuisine, which is most, most of our menu is Southeast Asian, about, I would say, 70%, of it, which is Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, Laos, Vietnam. Uh, very hot cuisine right now. Chipotle, has anybody heard of Chipotle? Of course, yeah. They, uh, they have a company called uh, Shop House. It's a brand that they've recently um, launched, or they are in the process of launching. Shop House, literally, it rolled out six months after we started Hawkers, and my business partner, Alan, said to me, I think, I think Chipotle is shopping us. I think, they're, I think they're stealing our menu. And I'm like, I can promise you that Chipotle has no idea who we are, <laughs> but it's really cool that we're on the same plane and that we, it kind of validates what we're doing here. Um, and if anything, I would love to, I would love to build this up to 50 restaurants and sell it to the Chipotle. That would be a dream. So, um, we actually looked at Chipotle for a lot of our, uh, a lot of our company direction from a brand perspective, from a culture perspective. We feel like they really have it together. So, if I had to pick a, a, a mentor business in the restaurant field, it would be Chipotle. Okay, we'll jump into this. I know I'm supposed to have six minutes. I 100%. I promise you, I'm going to go over that because I can't. There's no way I can six minutes. So uh, the concept of Hawkers, for those of you who have been, have been there, hopefully you know the concept. Hopefully your server explained to, them, to you. Uh, if they didn't, please let me know afterwards so I can <laughs> recommend it accordingly. Um, basically, if you go to the streets of Asia, if uh, Joel and I went to the streets of Asia, we would walk, walk into these Hawker centers. You can see there's a picture of them here. A lot of different stalls. Every stall specializes in one menu. We would walk down. Joel would say, oh, I want some pot stickers. I would say, oh, I want some stir fry dishes. We would both collect a few dishes. We would come back to the table, like a communal style setting put the food in the middle, we would share the food, we would talk about the food, it's very food-centric culture. So we've recreated that concept at Hawkers, um, but without all the uh, health code violations. <laughs> <laughs> um, that would be authentic, wouldn't it? Uh, so what we've done is uh, we've picked the best of those street foods from all over Asia, um, countries that are, it's Pan-Asian, so it's China, Japan, Korea, all the Southeast Asian countries I mentioned. Uh, and we put them into a menu, and the menu is, um, moving on, is sharing encouraged. 
So it's a small plate style menu. If you hear a server say this, tell them they're not supposed to, but it's Asian toppings. It's the best way to put it. It's, it's very simply put, it's Asian small plates. Um, Asian toppings, of course, doesn't make sense because toppings are Spanish. <laughs> but it's just for the sake of uh, making the six minutes, right? Um, so the other the other major point on this page that I want to that I want to hit on is uh, we talk about sharing the streets. Um, we're very social media driven, so we haven't spent one dollar in paid advertising. Um, it's all been in word of mouth, and word of mouth I mean social media, PR, and all that kind of stuff. So one of the advantages of having a, a, a restaurant that has an in-house brand agency is that you don't have to spend money on, on advertising, right? Uh, on the other hand, we do spend money in the community. Um, we do. We organize a lot of events. We participate in a lot of events, and this is going to be a central part of our growth and development into every market that we go in. So we're going to go into a new market. We're going to be a corporate restaurant, but we're going to try to really own that market too. We're going to try to try to immerse ourselves in that community and not just come in, and, you know, open the doors and say, "Come on in." We're uh, just like Applebee's. So. This is an event we did where we taught kids how to use chopsticks. That one was really fun. Um, this was the Downtown Food and Wine Fest that some of you probably went to. That was 30,000 people. Um, we won best overall menu at that show. This, I think that was the same show. That one was the uh, Cows and Calves with John Rivers, who I'll touch on in a minute. Um, that's for which part of the you don't know. Lanterns of Love is a, a campaign that we started with Easter Seals. Um, I'm actually on the board for the uh, Central Florida Easter Seals. And we, we developed this brand where <coughs> basically customers will get this this check this uh, lantern, paper lantern, in their checkbook. They'll say, my name is Caleb, I want to donate such and such amount to Eastern Seals of Florida. We were absolutely amazed. Like our customers, I mean, we just have a fantastic customer base. These people were giving 100 bucks, 150 bucks. We had a guy give $500 on one of those things. And I'm like, you sure you don't mean five? No, <laughs> five hundred. Okay. So that was a, that's a great way to be inter, kind of in the community. <laughs> I'm not going to go through all these, but you can kind of glance over them. Um, a couple I'll hit on is we won Best Restaurant in Florida in 2011, Best New Restaurant in Florida, excuse me. And in uh, 2012, the Airtran Magazine, which is a magazine that's in the back pocket of your, your Airtran flights, uh, we were top 10 must do's in Orlando, and on that list was Epcot, Harry Potter, Wizard of the World, <laughs> and uh, Hawkers. So that was pretty cool to be on the list of those guys. Um, obviously, we have a uh, all the reviews and uh, critic reviews that go along with starting in the restaurant as well, I and mean, they've been uh, all positive. Um, right now, our Facebook, uh, Facebook profile is at 5,100 fans, so we're growing that rapidly. I remember used to this again, more local recognition. Um, a few of the trends that I want to touch on, these are just more industry style trends or, or trends that are rele relevant to this business. Um, First one is that 40% of Americans feel that it's cheaper to eat out than at home. Well, that was really interesting. So I don't know if any of you agree with that, but uh, the fact is that Americans today are spending about twice as much as they were 25 years ago on eating out. Um, it, I mean, it's, it's very significant. The, the restaurant business is through the roof. I mean, and you look around and you see tons of restaurants opening, and not all of them are closing. That means there's got to be more business going on. Uh, another thing I'll touch on is the Southeast Asian cuisine. So I mentioned the Chipotle concept, also the guy that started uh, Burger 21, which is one of those uh, you know, gourmet burger uh, chains. He mentioned that uh, 2012, the number one food trend is Southeast Asian cuisine. So it's, it's definitely up and coming in the, in the foodie, uh, foodie world. Uh, and then the last thing is a small plate style menu. So, <coughs> pardon me. If you go to Red Lobster, Olive Garden, Brio right now, you're gonna find small plates on the menu. You would not have found that two to three years ago. Um, all respect to Darden, Rick Walsh is one of my mentors who was the founder of Darden. Uh, the, he, he will tell you that they're suffering. Darden is suffering. And they are <clears throat> they're the epitome of casual dining today. So they basically what casual, what their definition of casual dining has come to is fine dining for low income people. What we're trying to do is reinvent casual dining with concepts like ours. And Red Lobster and Olive are doing the same thing. You'll notice that they had 37% drop in profit in the last quarter. That's because they're trying to redo some things there. So I, I, they have some really great people at the helm, so I don't want to speak negatively of them. I think they're on their way. I know Sally Seto is the president of Red Lobster now. She's amazing. She was VP of marketing before that, which to me says a lot. I'm a marketing guy. Um, so anyways, just to say, small plates are a huge trend in the industry. Uh, these are a few facts about Jacksonville. You guys don't care about that. Uh, you, 
care about the numbers. So our projections, year one, I'm just going to look at top line revenue, and then if you have questions afterwards, you can, I'll be happy to go through it with you. I know it's really hard to see. Um, year one, 1.5, year two, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 2 million. <laughs> just to give you an idea of how these projections line up with our Mills location. Our Mills location has 30 fewer seats, and our Mills location has beer and wine only, and this location will have full liquor. Um, and our sales are on pace for 2.3 million in year three. We're projecting 1.8 in Jackson. We're gonna blow these out of the water. That's the bottom. There's absolutely no reason we shouldn't. We've been on channel for news in Jacksonville doing cooking segments. I had I'm on a first name basis with the Florida Times Union, the Jacksonville Business Journal, and every outlet that's up there. In fact, to be blunt with you, and I hate to even say this because it's embarrassing, we're gonna have we're gonna have a larger presence in Jacksonville than we do in Orlando. And it's because here we got lazy. I have my network. I can just say, hey, come see us, we open a restaurant. Up there, I don't know anybody. So I had to really get out there and, and, and work for media. Um, what I'd like to ask of you today, I'll start, uh, and I know I'm almost over, I've, I've gotta be over on time. <laughs> Significantly, right? Whatever, keep listening. So, uh, so real quick, uh, one of my mentors, my personal mentor, is John Rivers. He, uh, he started Four Rivers Barbecue, you might have heard of that place. They, uh, they have a line around the building at every location. Um, John is an investor with Talkers. Um, John's structure, which is the structure that we've selected to use for our Jacksonville, uh, Jacksonville expansion, is a multi-investor structure. structure. It's, it's the intent behind it is to have a lot of brand advocates out there. And to summarize it, uh, the minimum investment is 25000 so we're not looking for somebody to take all 600,000. That's not the idea. Um, we've, we've structured it where we have, we want to have a lot of people out there pushing the brand forward. That's what he's done and he's done really successfully. Um, we're about three, two thirds to three quarters of the way through our raise right now. So what I'm asking of you is for you to think about people that you know that may have played in this field before, or maybe they just, uh, you know, it's something that, that they would want to get into that have 25,000, 25 to 50,000 laying around that they would like to see triple in the next three or four years. Any questions? Sorry for one. Huh? Yes. How did you pick Jacksonville? I mean, Good question. When we did our market research, uh, most restaurants pull from a one to three mile radius of consumers. Our restaurant pulls from a seven mile radius. We're very destination type of location. Um, that means we're pulling from Okoe. East Orlando, Lake Nona, Lake Mary. We, we felt like the risk of cannibalizing this current store was greater than the, the cost. That it, it's logistically, it's, it's gonna be more difficult. It is already more difficult. We have four partners, we're all low 30s. We don't care about sleeping three hours a night, so we're okay with it. But good question. How much does it cost you hauling to open this store? Uh, 600,000 is what Jacksonville has been, uh, the, the opening has been set at. Uh, Beyond Jackson, we're going to have Tampa, South Florida, and Atlanta. Those are going to be the next three markets we hit. Uh, I, I would love to up that to about 750. We, we definitely underestimated just a little bit. So we'll what make it actually, worse. What does it actually cost? It costs 600 yeah. to open so. Yes. So why would you want to make it more expensive? Open it, so. Because I'd like to not have to pitch pennies everywhere like we're doing right now. Uh, so we, uh, yes. Are you considering a happy concert of franchise? Uh, we don't want to franchise. It, I'm not going to say we will never franchise, um, but you run a lot of risk there in, in your brand integrity. Um, it's just something that it's it's a dangerous road to go down until you have that corporate infrastructure. So at least right now we have a plan for our first five, and then we're going to reevaluate, see where we are, see if Darden wants to buy us, and then. Go with your smaller um, vending options, like I saw with the with the food festivals and everything, have you ever sold? Anything out of those, or those primarily just for events? If you have sold out of them, what are usually the profit that you make out of the small vendors we consider you know, downtown or out on campuses? Or? Good question. Um, it really wouldn't be worth it to, because of the amount of food you can turn out, it wouldn't be worth it to sell. So they're more just for display only. But we have done catering events with them, and people regularly uh, rent those for if they want to have like a food station style catering event. Um, that's been really cool. What's the uh, Jacksonville's going to be in late November. Um, Tampa should be mid. Uh, Tampa's going to be fall next year, and then the remaining two will be in 2015. So, with the investor, would they just be in Jacksonville, like a limited partnership? That's correct. Yeah, it's it's where each location's going to have its own set of investors. The idea behind these projections is that I don't want to have to go do this again, so I want to be able to call these guys in 10 months and say, "Hey, we're open in Tampa. Do you want in?" And they're like, "Oh yeah, get me in this." And, you know, throw it that way. 
obviously, I say that and then I'll speak out of both sides of my mouth because we also want to have people that are immersed in that community. Like for Jacksonville, we've set aside uh, a minimum of 150,000 just for Jacksonville investors. Like it doesn't, I don't care, you know, where we get with it, but 150 has to come from Jacksonville. And we're actually almost there, but uh, just to give me an idea, that's part of the advantage of using that type of structure. Yes. Hey, you opened this under the Greg Vee offering, I mean, not to get the legal, so how are you raising your money? Is it like it's a PPM structure, so it's private placement room random. Yeah, every, every restaurant's a scale-up challenge. Garden, for example, has wonderful, rest, uh, wonderful test chefs, and they develop beautiful menus, so they can't be prepared. Um, how are you going to deal with that as you scale up? So how do you train your staff and quality and maintain that, that quality and brand or everyone the company staff? Yeah, good question. Um, the, the answer really is that it's always it, it, it's always improving. That's something that unfortunately we're never going to be finished with. So as we grow, every every time we grow, we're going to have new challenges that we face. Um, with this particular restaurant, myself and the other four owners, we don't step foot in that restaurant. I mean, we're I say that we go in and we quality control, but we never work in the restaurant. We're completely hands off. Of it. So to us, the systems are in place, right? They're good to go. Let's go for a new one. Well, obviously, it's not quite that easy. Um, the, the, um, though we have rigorous training in place that, that has been successful at the Mills location, the challenge for us right now in Jacksonville is that we have to change, we have to train 70 people in two weeks. So that you can imagine is going to be really intense. The good news is that we have our general manager from Orlando, our assistant kitchen manager, and five hourly staff who have uh, agreed to move to Jacksonville permanently to uh, run that location. So that's uh, that's pretty encouraging. Should be encouraging for people that invest in that. Any other questions? What do you do to maintain and incentivize your staff? For example, you just said they're willing to move to Jacksonville. Have you done anything special to reward them or or bring them in as part of the process? What, how did you do that? Because it's notoriously fickle with a high turnover rate on the restaurant business. Um, when we started, we had we had that. We were we were the typical. I mean, now that now that I'm sort of beyond that stage, uh, I look back and everything you read about restaurants, all the nightmares they go through, we went through. We learned the hard way. That was when I started reaching out to people like John Rivers and Rick Walls and saying, hey, I need some help. Like, I, I don't want to have to figure this out on my own. I'm sure I can, but do I really want to go through a three-year learning curve to figure it out? <coughs> so to your point, well, it's really a culture. That's all it is. It's a culture shift. And it took us six to eight months to really turn it around to really get it from this culture of clock in, clock out to having some pride of ownership in the business um, and you know in your team and in your teammates and all that. And uh, to me, you can incentivize people as much as you like monetarily. You can you know throw money at them, you can throw recognition at them. And I think those things can be used and they can be used well, but nothing nothing compares to having a culture of being being held responsible and accountable by your teammates. So I love when I go in there and I hear one server told another server, hey, that, that uh, your, your table, they were asking for you, they needed something, I went in and got it for you, but just so you know, you know whatever. Or you hear the kitchen, like it's, I've seen uh, our expo walk by and say, hey, uh, you guys really should be using a little less garlic in this, so next time. I mean, to me, that's, you know, they're, they're improving each other. So the, it's almost like you set this process in place and it's, it's improving on its own. It's, very, you know, it's, a, it's a system based approach, I guess you could say. But culture is the short answer. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'd like to throw a testimony in there for you. I think three or four times a week. You guys are awesome, and we can't wait to see you taste the Gordon Park this month. All right, I appreciate it very much. Any other questions? Social media. So what, like, so what would be the exit as you mentioned? Is your plan to kind of scale up and then hopefully sell it off at some point? Yeah, the and I know you're supposed to have this big exit strategy, and we. What we've done is, we've, I mean, it's like looking at a crystal ball, really. Uh, it's, it's, I can tell you what my ideal scenario is, but is that the reality? I don't know. You know what I mean? <coughs> After four years from now, uh, three and a half years, we're going to have five stores operational in five different markets. To me, once we get to that point, we're going to be, we're going to have a high value. At that point, we're going to determine: do we want to sell to, I guess, I mean, literally a Darden or you know any any other. Uh, restaurant group or do we want to 
uh, bring on some VC guys and uh, get them to buy out our existing investors and go, go from five to 50 with the next set of investors. That's a decision that we really can't make yet because I don't know what kind of offers we're gonna have on the table. So, yes. What's the dream? Like, what are you guys trying to, your restaurant to spend for? The dream is to, the dream is to, uh, that's a good question. Uh, the dream is for hawkers to be a household name. So I don't ever want to be a, uh, I don't want to be Chipotle, I don't want to be McDonald's, I don't want to be on every corner. I want to have a presence in every major market. So I want to be a Brio, I want to be a P.F. Chang's, but with better food. <laughs> and so, you know what I mean, that's, that's, that's the dream. Is, uh, and I would say, to, to tighten that up even more, really the, the East Coast is where we're at. And if somebody wants to pick it up and take it nationwide, then more power to it. Anything iconic in the physical layout? Like the first thing that's fine is all like the horses outside the entrance. Anything with your actual store itself that sets your mark in the rest? Good point. Um, I would say our design, uh, the, the interior, is the, the whole style of it is going to be is, is going to be unique. Um, the one that Mills, I have you been there. It's okay. It's yeah. it's uh, it's it's very industrial type of setting. So we try to bring the streets indoors. At Mills, I mean, we have to understand that at Mills, we're playing the cards we were dealt. We, I, I hate to even say this, we opened this restaurant at ninety thousand dollars. So if you know anything about restaurants, that is absurdly low. We opened our doors because we had to, because we were out of money. And uh, we were literally handwriting checks. Like we didn't even have a POS system yet. So all that to say that we haven't been able to invest, uh, we haven't been able to, to evolve yet uh, at the Mills location. But in Jacksonville, we're gonna be able to open the way we want to. We're gonna have the interior we want to have. And you'll see a lot of, we use a lot of raw elements. We use raw, raw wood, raw metal. Uh, a lot of things that you would find on the streets of Asia that are used by actual hunters. Any other questions? On a personal level, is the restaurant business taken away from your desire for branding and design? No, this has been, I like this a lot better than Soapbox <laughs> because I get complete control over it. Um, I'll take it to, uh, I don't have to listen to, to uh, I don't have to listen to clients tell me how to brand my business. This is our new menu we're going to be rolling out. You'll, you'll know this, you'll, this is very different. So this is, uh, this is the front panel, this is the back panel, this is the interior layout. Um, I, you just got me on this, sorry. Uh, so as you open it up, the first reveal panel tells you what is a hawker, um, the fact that sharing is encouraged, timing is everything, which means the food comes out as it's prepared, not as it's, uh, as it's prepared, not as it's ordered. And then you try something new, and then if you go to the inside, <laughs> we try to keep the brand very fun and kitschy. I, I absolutely love Hawker's brand. I love being able to, to get in there and, and play around and tinker around and uh, have fun with the brand and not have to feel like I'm impressing a client, but get to do it just for the customers. That's really, it's really, it's, it's been phenomenal for me. So, yes, sir. The restaurant is fairly welcome. It's a happy accident. We uh, originally, <laughs> Originally, we wanted to make an H that looked like a uh, that looked like um, what do you call it? The, you know, the Chinese symbol is a term for those. Um, what we found is that when we got into it, it actually looks like a hawker that's holding the sticks up. So what this what this kind of this has been this this has been refreshed just a little bit from the one that you've seen, which is a little more the old one, uh, but it's it's the same uh, same symbol, very kind of very cool colors. Yeah, I like the color combination. Appreciate that very much. Yeah, we tried to add in a few more softer elements into this one. So we had, we took the same color palette we had and basically just added to it. And that's what that's what I feel brand is, is that it's ever changing, it's ever evolving, it's always improving, you're always adding to it. Um, so that's what we're trying to do with Hawkers. And then we'll always do that. That's right. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thanks so much guys, sorry for